thank you, God, for bringing us together today. We thank you so much for the journey it's been up to this Passover season. And we are here. We really have arrived. I'm so grateful for this time, for the learning with these children, these young people. And I just pray a blessing over our continued learning today and the coming week of Passover. I pray that you will be glorified, that we would open our hearts to the ultimate um, significance of this time. Because this was when our Messiah, Yeshua, came and kind of accomplished what he came here for. So, bless our learning, and I thank you for your Hebrew language, and I thank you for the participation and opportunity um, that Elizabeth has given me, and for these young people to be involved. In Yeshua's name, Amen. We'll do bracha for learning Hebrew. So, you guys got your bracha out. So, Baru. Baru. Kami Lamed. Kami Lamed. Et Yadi. Et Yadi. Lashaper. Lashaper. Et. Yes, and how did we say his name in Hebrew? There was a couple ways, right? So, um, Eliyahu, right, was one of them. Trying to find out where I'm at here. Okay. Um, and what was the other way, the biblical? Right. So we're going to move on from there. I wanted to break apart his name and teach you some other things, but we're just going to move on. So Exodus 13, 6 through 7, for seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day there shall be a feast to the Lord, unleavened bread shall be eaten throughout the seven days, and nothing leavened shall be seen among you, nor shall any leaven be seen among you in all your borders. So do you guys remember the Hebrew word for unleavened bread? you got to remember that. What is it? Um, um, from the first day, which is called Passover or Pesach. The whole feast week is called Hag HaMatzot, so the Feast of Unleavened Bread, okay? So far we learned about the commandment of eating matzah, unleavened bread, for seven days for Hag HaMatzot. Recalled what I just said, the first two days of the feast are Pesach, referred to as Passover. The rest of the week is known as Hag HaMatzot, Feast of Matzah. There's another part of this commandment that must come first. As we read above, 
there is to be nothing leavened found or seen among us, even in all of our borders. So this led to the application of removing all products which are leaven, leavening agents, such as yeast, baking soda, etc., and all leavened foods, such as bread, pasta, crackers, etc., those all should be removed. Um, additionally, there are some products you might not even expect which contain yeast, such as baked beans or barbecue sauce. They have yeast in them. I don't know why, but they do. The idea is that leavening causes tossing up or is significant, relevant, corresponding to the attribute of pride. So being puffed up or prideful, enlargening, which could correspond to greed, fermentation, which could correspond to bad decision making, and the symbolisms to all these things could be very vast. So in short, leavening at this time of the year represents that which God would like to remove, and we have to take an active role in this removal. So God wants to remove these things from our hearts and from our lives. So leavening can be likened to sin of any kind. Yeshua himself upheld this idea when he likened leaven to hypocrisy, because in Luke 12 and verse 1, he said the following. So in the meantime, when an innumerable multitude of people had gathered together, so they trampled one another, he began to say to his disciples, first of all, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. In God's Torah's instructions, there are two Hebrew words we will look at briefly here to define what he wants us to remove on a practical level, which will echo into our spiritual plane. So leavened food would be this word chametz. So say chametz with me. Good. And the leavening agents are called seor. So say seor. Good job. So the root for the word chametz has interesting definitions, again, depending upon the context, which can clue us into the nature of what we should be seeking to remove. Pesach starts tomorrow night, guys. We are here. So I, as I was writing this, it was in the last week before Pesach, the Seder. It's tomorrow night. And this whole week has been a heightened time of searching. And it's linked to you. reckonings of when to celebrate things, but actually Yeshua entered the city of Yerushalayim, of Jerusalem, the day before yesterday, which would have been the 10th of Nisan, so that was the day that they had the palms, and they were declaring him as king, they were throwing their robes before him, which was, your robe is like your identity, and so you're saying, take who I am, when you lay that down before him. So that was important that he came into the temple. And if we're talking about cleaning our houses of the leavening, he went to the temple and what did he do? He overturned the tables. He was cleaning out his father's house before Passover. So he was participating in the very thing that we do every year. So that's pretty cool. Um, on the 10th of Nisan also would be the day that you would take the lamb into your house just to guard it, to make sure it didn't get hurt, um, to examine it, to make sure it was unblemished. And that too was taking place with Yeshua because that was when he was being questioned in the temple. Who are you? Who do you say you are? Testing him, testing him, examining him. So these are all very, very poignant times. So you should know tomorrow night, Israel time, about eight hours difference. Yeshua would be having his last Seder with his disciples, actually his apostles. His disciples are, were kind of the wider, broader um, group that was learning with him. So tomorrow's a very important day, um, as was yesterday and this whole time we're in. So, <clears throat> all right. Chametz is the verbal root form, and it can mean to be leavened, to be sour, to taste something leavened, 
to be embittered, to be grieved, to be cruel, to oppress or be ruthless, to be red. Okay, so that's, those are the definitions of chametz or leaven. Even if you have no plans to abstain from bread products or to do this removal commandment, think about, if you will, even if you don't want to do that, think about this, how the spiritual application could enrich your life and your walk with the Lord. So let's take a look, okay? We're going to use these definitions and just think about it. So to be leavened. We might ask ourselves, where am I puffed up about myself? Where am I prideful? How can I resolve to be more humble, to be sour? Where do I have a bad attitude about anything? How can I work on my negativity? To taste something leavened. Even if I'm not prideful or puffed up, what negative influences around me, be it entertainment, music, friends, etc kind of things am I sampling and what should I do to protect myself from such influences if you turn the page follow along too with your eyes buddy because this will be helpful to be embittered where in my heart have I kept unforgiveness what in my life do I feel resentful and bitter about how can I genuinely get with God and assess these issues Am I willing to surrender them to him and forgive or heal and grow versus holding on to and becoming contaminated by something toxic? To be grieved. Where in my heart am I broken and hurt? Where is there sadness and depression? How can I talk about this with someone who will give me good counsel? Can I try to work through these feelings which can hinder my walk with God and living my life to the fullest. To be cruel. Are there any ways I am mean or aggressive towards others? Is there any way I use my words or thoughts or actions to deliberately cause discomfort to another? How can I remove this bad attribute, this comments from my life? How can I better pursue peace in my life? To be oppressive, is there any way that I use uh, my advantage, be it my talents or my age or my intelligence, my name, etc., to lord over anyone else? Are there any ways I pressure others to do what I want to do? In what ways can I put myself last in situations and see to the needs of others instead? To be ruthless. In what ways do I close my eyes and my heart to the pain and suffering of others, even my siblings and parents? Do I mock or disregard what for them is true struggle, frustration, and anguish? How can I practice more empathy and compassion? And then finally, to be read. The sages teach one who carefully guards himself against giving in to anger, and avoids any arguments, merits that his home is compared to the holy temple. So the early sages said, anyone who becomes angry is like one who worships idols. They also said, whenever one becomes angry, if he is a wise man, his wisdom leaves him. If he's a prophet, his prophecy leaves him. The life of the irate is not a true life. And my son can attest that that's probably my biggest hunk of comments, of comments that love me in my life. It's just giving into anger. So just think about that list over the weekend, over the week, especially tonight and tomorrow, because it's kind of like the last day of cleaning out the leavening, and, and see what you could get with God about those things. And now we're going to learn the word comments. So let's get your pencil ready. This word consists of three Hebrew letters. So please first tell me this first one, the name of the letter. Would you say it again loudly? Okay. Okay. And then could you please tell me this vowel's name? Come on. So, what sound does 
a match make? Ah, ah. So if we have hit, we'll put here actually on the line. Now okay, do you need a pencil then? Definitions, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to put something eleven, but uh, but it could have meant what all those things: embittered, grieved, cruel, oppressive, ruthless. Mm -hmm. Is do you think it's interesting that on the altar of offerings, if you remember, korban meaning from the root karav meaning to come near. So the way to come near to God. He didn't want any of his offerings leavened. So he didn't want any of that nearby. There's only one offering at the end of this feast, at the Feast of Pentecost or Shavuot, where there's two leavened loaves brought, and that's the only time that any leavening touches his altar. All right, so back in the day, there was no yeast packets to throw into flour to make the bread rise. It would have to be a sourdough type starter, which really is just flour and water. And you feed it every day with the flour and water, and eventually it ferments and it becomes a leavening agent. Then you would put that starter into another batch of dough or uh, flour and water, and it would puff up. There was no yeast like we have today. So at Pesach, at Passover, you'd take that starter that you had, and you'd throw it out, and you'd have to start over again. So that's the significance of that. And this is a, it's spiritually significant because we're to think of ourselves as having left Egypt. We don't want to bring anything from there, really, of the negative things. Granted, they brought massive treasure and properties, but the bad things we were supposed to leave. Did they? They didn't. But such is life. It's a journey to get to where we need to go. They were going to Sinai. They had 50 days between Passover to Pentecost or Shavuot, um, which it means the Feast of Weeks. It celebrates the giving of the Torah to get themselves ready. So God didn't take us straight from idolatry and then hand us all these instructions. He gave us some time to kind of prepare ourselves. So, um, the verbal root for the Hebrew word used for leavening, so the thing that which is a leavening agent is known as seor. Chametz is a product that's already leavened. It's a leavened, it's pasta, it's bread, it's crackers, etc. Seor is the leavening agent, so we're going to learn that word now. Seor. Good. Va. And what did I tell you about Shabbat? Yeah. 
It's silent. And yeah, so we're going to treat it as silent. So what sound do we have here then? Nice. Yeah, so just the S sound, right? Okay. Um, so you kind of have like an apostrophe to show kind of a stop, like a pause. And now we have which letter is this? Aleph. Aleph. And we have a vowel with Aleph, which Olam. vowel? Good. Holam. Holam. Which sound does Holam make? O. O. Okay, so Aleph with the O would be what? Um, o. Good. And then we have which letter? Resh. Resh. Okay, which makes what sound with the vowel? Uh, okay, so the OR. The OR. I have it here written more as set OR, but really, if you guys will see in the past three weeks, I'm also working on my pronunciation, so the or, the or. So say that with me, the or, the or. and that's the leavening agent. So this is basically leaven. Okay. All right. So we are going to continue reading in Exodus 13. We're now moving on to page 11. And starting with verse 8. You shall tell your son on that day, saying, It is because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt, and it shall be, it shall serve as a sign to you on your hand and as a reminder on your forehead that the Torah of the Lord may be in your mouth. For with a powerful hand the Lord brought you out of Egypt. Therefore, you shall keep this ordinance at its appointed time from year to year. So I think I stressed that one of the most important parts of Passover, of Pesach, is telling this story and telling it over and over. Every day in the prayers, we recall leaving Egypt every single day. But it's very important to tell the whole story to our children, to our guests, everyone. The Haggadah, if you guys still have those little books I gave you, that's a Haggadah. Um, in plural, Haggadot is the book, this tool we've been learning. The ordered meal that we will partake of tomorrow evening. There are thousands of translations and versions of this special book. The word Haggadah itself means telling. And it comes from this commandment that we just read to tell your children, to tell for generations, this story of deliverance accomplished through God's might. So let's learn this word Haggadah. Haggadah. So let's do that. Four letters. First of which is this. Which letter is this? Good. Good. Okay. And we have this vowel with it. What is his name? Good. I heard it. Patak. Bless you. What sound does Patak make? Ah. Good. So, hey, the Patak would be what? Ah. Ah. Okay, next letter. Is this which? Gemel. Good. Gemel. So we can write that there. Um, with what vowel? Tamat. Okay, so Gemel with Tamat would be what? Da. Good. Da -da. Now we have this letter, which is what? Ko. Dalet. Good. And it comes again with which vowel? Tamat. Tamat. So Dalet with Tamat would be what? Da. Da. And we have our last letter. 
Okay. A. Is this word feminine or masculine? Feminine. Because of what? The hey, right? So we have Hagada. 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 All right. So the next part of the Haggadah, or the Haggadah, we are going to look at involves this idea of telling our children the story involving them in the Seder, of, in the Seder. But before we examine the four sons, they are called the Arba Banim, um, there is a beautiful blessing said, which we would usually say before learning Torah. And it goes, blessed is the omnipresent, that's one translation of it. At this point, the Haggadah begins focusing on the explanation of biblical verses. So this passage, therefore, begins with an exclamation praising God. In the passage, we bless God four times, corresponding to the four Torah passages that instruct us to retell the Exodus. Um, so what fours have we learned so far? Do y'all remember what the word for four is in Hebrew? We learned that word. Do y'all remember what it was? Because it was last week. Do you remember? It was, um, see if you can find it. I think it was last week when we were focusing in on the fours in the Seder. I have the first lesson, I don't have the second one right here. Okay, you guys don't have the, from last week, it would be on page five of last week's lesson, the word for four. Arba, very good, and you have such great um, pronunciation too. Ar ba. Right? Arba. Arba. Four. What fours so far do we have in the center? We have four. Four. Do you remember from the beginning of last week's lesson? Four something. Remember? Four commandments. Four Questions, uh, right? On all the nights, we may eat bread or matzo. So the four questions were why on other nights we don't have to dip things, but tonight we dip twice. Okay, so the dipping, we have why do we eat matzo and not bread? Why do we eat any kind of vegetable, but tonight we gotta eat these bitter ones? And why do we recline? While well, other nights we can recline or sit however we want. And they corresponded to four answers, right? But it was something from a verse that God, it was basically for what? Promises, right? And so he had said, I will, we discussed what the covenant and the four responses. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will rescue you from their bondage. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and I will take you as my people. And that corresponded to the four cups of wine that we drink. And um, right now we're learning there are four blessings that we're going to give over to God before we learn about the four sons, okay, which I want to finish up with next week. So let's go to these four blessings, all right? What I wanted to show you is something very special. You know that God has lots of different names, right? Titles. Um, he's our shepherd. He's the God who sees. He is El Shaddai, the God who is strong, almighty. Um, Hashem is his four-letter name. Um, 
and that comes with its attribute of compassion. Many names. This is a lesser known name and it is a little bit obscure. So he is known as the unique one, but that's not really an accurate translation from the Hebrew. From the Hebrew, he's known as Hamakom. We're going to look at it. It means the place. So God is the place of the world, but the world is not his place. So he contains everything, right? He is our place, but this is not his place, right? He can dwell within us, but he can't fully be realized in this physical world. So, Shehu Makomo Shelolam Ve'ayin Olamo Makomo. God is the place of the world, but the world is not his place. I'm going to read this passage, and I want you to pay attention to how many times this word makom, meaning place, shows up. So in Genesis 28, 11, starting at 11, he, Jacob, Yaakov, came to a certain place, and he spent the night there. Because the sun had set, and he took one of the stones of the place, and he put it under his head and lay down in that place. He had a dream, and behold, a ladder was set on the earth with its, its top reaching to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Avram, the God of Yitzhak, the land on which you lie, I will give it to your descendants. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in you and in all of your descendants shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I have been with you, and I will keep you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob, or Yaakov, awoke from his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I didn't know it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God and the gate of heaven. So there's lots of makoms there, right? Do you think God did that on purpose? He wanted us to pay attention to that word in this passage. So, it's from that scripture where we derive the idea of this unique name of God. He is called the place. Ha-makom. It's very beautiful if you think about it because often he's described as what? Our shelter, our refuge, our tower, our home. So this idea of him as our place, very special. And this is how the blessing from the Haggadah, before we meet the four. Sons is translated, and actually I meant to put it in the Hebrew here, and I did not do that. I will update it. We can write it in together next week. The blessing goes like this. Blessed is Hamakom, the place. Blessed is he. Blessed is he who gave the Torah to his people Israel. Blessed is he. So you see four blessings in there. Blessed, 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 blessed. Makom, which we will learn now has four letters. So let's learn this. I love this name of God. Wherever you are, he can be your place. So, four letters. One, two, three, four. Starting with the first. Well, we want to, um, yeah, you're right. No, ha, I'm sorry, the reason I put ha or hey is because it's the place, like no other place specifically something, but in particular, thank you. Yes, Makom is what we're learning, though. The last? Mem. Mem. Good. And our vowel is um, which? Ma. Good. So we're going to sound that out. What do we have? 
Ma. Ma. Okay. And then we have this letter, which is which? Ko. Ko? Okay, and it's C has this vowel, which is what? Zion. So Zion is this letter. Oh, that's um, Holon Vav. Yes, good. And what sound does Holon Vav make? Is there just La? I mean, no, no La. Oh. Oh. Just O. Oh. Just O. Oh. Excellent. Because Vav by, by itself would be V. So we have then these two together would be what? The um, Ko sound ma -ko. with. Say it again. Ma -ko. Ma -ko. That's what we have so far. And then we have this letter, which is what? Mem. Good. Final mem, right? So, what sound does final mem make? Mm, and M. So, Makom. Makom. Excellent. And now you need to think. I want you to think with me. I'm not going to give you the answer. I want you to think. Another thing which is highly significant about what we're learning right now is, where is that place that Yaakov, that Jacob had the dream? What is that place for the future? What does it turn out to be? What was it in the past? What took place there? Malachi knows, but what, what do you guys think? So we know that he said it's the gate of heaven and it's the house of God. What is the house of God? For the future. It hasn't been built yet, but what will be built on that place? It is Jerusalem. In particular, what was built there in the future? The altar. The altar, the only important altar that there is in the Holy Temple, right? Yeah. So the Holy Temple would be built there in a future time, but what happened there before Yaakov was even born, before Jacob was even born, what happened at that place? Really important. What happened there? Do we all know? I want to take a guess. It is something that pictured what Messiah Yeshua is about to do tomorrow night. And I know that will be... Wait, when Abraham took his son up yes, onto the altar of the Lord. That's yeah. it. It's called the Atkezah, which means the binding. So he took his son, him and his son, Yitzhak or Isaac, so write this down, to offer him up, right? To God as an Ola, as a lifted up offering. So he went to lift up his son to God, and he fully believed that God was capable of resurrecting his son. Still, that happened there, and in the future, the temple would be built there. Very, very important place. And we know that what happened on that mountain pictured what Yeshua would do. He and the Father in agreement, giving his life of his own hand, just like Isaac was not a little kid. He was in his 30s. He could have overpowered his older, elderly father easily, but he chose to give his life, and so did Yeshua. So that would answer that next part. Why is this significant as far as the last Pesach, the last Passover of Messiah Yeshua? He did that same thing nearby. So, write those answers down. I'm just gonna check the time. Mm -hmm. About 14 minutes. All right. So we're gonna meet now. One of my favorite parts of the seder, the Keneged Arba Banim. These are the four sons. Okay. So I'm gonna tell you a little parable here. Four children came to the Seder. One was wise, one was wicked, one was simple, and one was silent. It was Seder night at Long Rock. The family gathered around the table and Zaidi, which is Yiddish for grandpa, began to read the Haggadah. 
Suddenly, one child was heard to ask in an undertone, what is going on here anyway? At that point, another child muttered, yeah, what does all this mean to you? Let's eat already. Another child piped up, I know what's going on. I know what he's reading. I know everything about it. The last child didn't say anything but managed to look manifestly bored as Davy continued reading the Haggadah, oblivious to the murmuring. So perhaps the Haggadah deliberately provides caricatures of four types of children to teach us something about the care we must take when we answer questions. Each person at our Seder, Seder, is coming from a different place, and also each one of us is coming to the table differently than we may have in previous years. So I have these little drawings in every Haggadah. This is the section. It's the four sons. I don't think we're supposed to take this literally as parents and start thinking to ourselves, hmm, which one is the wise? Which one's the wicked? Which one's the this or the that? No. These four sons are four attributes that are inside of each one of us. We have parts of these four sons in each one of us. I love this because some of them are easy to spot, some of them are not. And if you're starting to recognize your Hebrew, it'll be very easy for you, at least with the, these two. So you can see, let's look at this one first, this gold color. This is a very famous Jewish uh, artist. I love all his things. So we have over here, if we're going right to left, like in Hebrew, right? This is our, um, our Chacham. That means he's the wise son. You can see he's got his kippa. He kind of just, he knows what's up, where he's standing. We have the Rasha. Can anybody tell me who that guy looks like? Who does he resemble to you? He is this guy. This guy. So what, what does he kind of like Hitler. resemble? Thank you. Yeah. Yep. He's the Rasha. He's evil and he does look like Hitler, right? Yeah. So we have down here then the Tom. There's nothing wrong with the Tom. He's got his uh, seat seat on. Yeah, but he yeah. just kind of, yes, this, this one right here. Okay. But he's just kind of, you know, simple. And then we have this one. I noticed that <laughs> in a lot of the renderings of the, um, the one who doesn't know how to ask, it's, it's usually um, the stronger, like more like, because the Jewish people have definitely, some of them, a thing against maybe like bodybuilding athletics because back when the Greeks were taking over and that was kind of a negative thing. So you have here the soldier, he's strong, he's just, but he's ignorant is what this is kind of showing. That doesn't mean we need to take it that way, but it's just, that's what the artist rendered it as. Let's, before we go here, because I want you guys to fill it in yourself, let's look at this picture. This one might be a little more difficult if you can't read the Hebrew underneath. So who would you think which one would, would be which? Um, You've got uh, over wise. here to the right, he's got his book. It looks like he's, he's almost teaching. He's, he would be the wise. The one on the left would be the wicked. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, which one? Yeah. So which one do you think is which? How about let's go to the, all the way to the other side by the donkey. Which one do you think that is? The quiet. So he's the one who like, he, yeah, he can't, he doesn't know, right? He's even holding his hands like, I don't even know what to ask. Um, and the Tom, yeah, he's just kind of like, he's also, I mean, he's got, he's got it going on, but he's very simple. And then this is the evil one. I'm not sure why he's evil. He's got a sword, so you can see he's got, and uh, it looks like, right, in his belt, and he's just kind of got his arms crossed, and he looks like he's looking up to heaven with his arms crossed. So anyway, there are thousands of renderings of these sons. I've seen them in cartoon. I've seen them in Simpsons. Yeah. I've seen them in claymation. So I've left a little space right here for you to write it either in English, Hebrew, or both. So you're going to pick which one do you think is the Hakam, the wise son, which one is the Rasha, which is literally the wicked son or evil son, which one is the Tom, the simple or lazy son, and which one is the Je'ano Yodea Lishol, the son who doesn't even know enough 
to ask. So you go ahead and write those in there while I'm going to write these on the board so we can practice also identifying these letters. Since we've still got eight minutes. there's parts of us that are wise. We get it. We connect to something. We are listening and God is like moving in our life and you know how that feels when it happens. That's that part of the wise son, I feel, that is digesting, that's really consuming, that's really clicking with the word of God and his desires for our life, his intentions. All of us have some wickedness in us, where we're rebellious, where we have our arms crossed, where we don't really want to listen, pay attention, and next week we're going to look at like what the biblical verses that respond to this is. Rasha asks his Abba, his father, what is all this to you? In other words, I don't want anything to do with it. This is just something you're doing. So we all have that in us, too. <laughs> sort of. She's like, she's but we don't want to, we want to we want to avoid labeling others. We want to identify what inside of us is of these funds. The time, the simple, or lazy. Where do I kind of glaze over, like my eyes roll back into my head when my mom or my dad are reading the Bible, or where do I zone out and think about other things, or where am I unproductive in my spiritual destiny? And then there's the son who doesn't even know how to ask, uh, enough to ask. And there's parts of that inside of us too. Like, I don't even know where I am. I don't even know what I'm supposed to do. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just an unmotivated baby part of ourselves. So let's practice writing these. Just tell me what these letters are, please. This one. Meaning wise. Okay. Keep filling in. Label your picture as we go through these. That means we have the chacham. We have the which letter is this? Oh, um, Vase. Vase. And we have this vowel. Tamat. So what do we? Ra. Ra. And then we have this letter. Shin. Shin. And it would also have that. So what do we have? Ra. Sha. Good. And what do we have? We have an iron. And he makes no sound, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have the rasha and the kasam. The wise and the these are biblical words. Really, rasha ra ra means evil. That's interesting that sometimes Hebrew words cross over into other languages. You have this false god of ra in the Egyptian language. It means evil. So that's kind of interesting. All right, let's do let's do one more. Finish this page and do Shema, and then we can come and check with Matza that I brought you to try. So, this letter. Uh, and this vowel. Um, Tata. And so it will make what sound? Ta. Ta. And. Mem. 
Let's see. Um, so C, so it's just what? Um, uh, um, needs to be simple. But really, in Hebrew, tamid, tam, it really means constant. He's like consistent. Okay. Simple, that's how they translate it. Maybe straightforward, whatever it is. So, by telling us the story of the four children, each with a distinct question, because they each come with a different question. So, actually, we have another four sets of questions. Um, the Haggadah is telling us to accept each person where they are and to begin from there. The questions that are asked must be addressed, and the questions that are not asked must be addressed. So the one who doesn't know how to ask, which we didn't write that all out, he too has to be addressed. You have to draw it out of him. You have to play games, sing songs, have activities, different things, or maybe your sibling, or maybe you have a parent who is sick. You need to kind of quote, take, take care. I don't know. Um, simple explanations encourage simple thinking. Even simple questions often have complex answers. And ignorance is not the same as stupidity. So the wise son of the Haggadah puts forth a question which is full of detail. He says, what are the testimonies and the precepts and the laws which the Lord our God commanded you? So you can see he considers himself a part of what's going on here. And he's very detailed when he wants to know what are each of these things, what are their intricacies and their details. So note the wording of the question. The child distinguishes between testimonies and precepts, precepts and laws, and he's anxious to know all of them. To this type of child and the child within us, one should answer in detail and strive to learn all of these distinctions, feeding your thirst for knowledge and a time. Stop there, because we're out of time, but we'll go on with these. I hope you labeled your sons and um, happy Pesach, or I would say Chag Sameach, happy uh, feast. And let's do Shema, and then we'll try to check with Matzah. So take out Shema, or if you already know it, hear O Israel. Hear O Israel. The Lord is our God. The Lord is our God. The Lord is one. Shema Yisrael. Shema Yisrael. Adonai Eloheinu. Adonai Eloheinu. Adonai Echad. Adonai Echad. Shema Turn this off. These are super good chocolate matzo.